Come on up. We don't have Scott here, but you remember everything that happened back in that committee. So come on up. Amy. Oh, they, should we just not this out? Some go to break. Okay. All right, uh, Vice Vice Chair Scott Nielsen. I'll say it like this: only thing standing between us and a break is the Finance Committee report. Is there any pressure on you? Zero. Okay, I I didn't think there would be any. Okay, so I'm filling in for uh, Chair Laura. Let me turn this. Hang on one sec. Okay. So first part of this uh, for the. Uh, Finance Committee is uh, 10.2 R277927, the Teacher and Student Success Program. Essentially, it, uh, the committee voted unanimously to approve the option three, weighted by the AT, or excuse me, weighted F FTE salary as the calculation method to determine the state's average teacher salary and directed staff to update the rule to reflect the option there. So the motion for the board is the committee moves that the board approve R277927 draft four on second and final reading. Okay, the motion before the board is that the board approve R277-927 uh, draft four on second and final reading. Um, questions or comments to the motion, uh, board member Volter? Hey, um, after talking with staff um, about some a few things that was brought up by board member Belknap, um, we have an amendment to it. And so I can either say to adopt draft five or I can do the amendments separately, however we would like to do it. Just, okay. So I I had a nonverbal cue. So I'm going to go ahead and move that we adopt draft five. So just let me take Well, that would be an amendment. Well, I. On second and final reading. I amend. amend the amendment that we adopt draft five on second and final reading. And then I can speak to that after. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Second. We just want to speak to the motion? Um, I just wanted, I think We're trying they're to bring it up to pulling it up. But what would be changed is line 48. And we would just add um, where it says other district level staff, we would add paid on an administrative salary schedule. And then on line 113B, um, where it says to support adult education programs, we would add or preschool. Because, and I can say the reasoning for that, but if they want me to. Okay, we have an amendment. Um, to to adopt draft five. Question? Any questions or comments? Um, board member Cindy Davis. Uh, I'd like to amend draft five. R two seven seven dash nine two seven to um, include in the average salary calculation um, the basic teacher contracts and not productivity model contract amounts for teachers. What line would you do that? I don't, uh, it's, I don't think it would necessarily change a line, but it may need to add a line because we have some districts that have a basic contract amount and then teachers will work, say, they'll buy an extra hour and a half. And I'm saying that piece should not be included in the district's average salary calculation. It should just be the teacher contract. That is the base salary, not the, the prep base that they buy? salary, correct. Correct. OK, I think there's some staff that want to comment, but go ahead. Superintendent. No, I'm just trying to clarify. I think you're um, referring to lines 98 I know, and 99. Are you trying to insert trying language to on those two is. lines? Is it, 
We're trying to assist you in your amendment. Yeah, that's I, that's fine to include it right there. I don't really care where it's included. I just want it included. Okay, thank Angie. Um, Chair, thank you. And Jamie and, and I might tag team on this one. But for the fiscal year 2020, we have the data that we have, and we don't even know what it's based on. It's self-reported from the LEAs, and it's already been received. And I don't think we will receive additional data. So if you were to amend that, we would need to do that for fiscal year 21, 2021 to change the submissions. But anyway. Right. Correct. Okay. Uh, Jamie, Jamie Barrett, um, school finance director. Right now we had to come up with a way just to come up with the average, the state's average. And so right. what we did this year um, in order to facilitate budgets and get um, districts and, and charter schools information is we took what was reported off of their program and the financial report for the teacher category and divided that by their total FTEs coming out of Cactus. And that was just a really yeah. quick way for us to figure out what the state's average would be. That's why we put in there just for fiscal year 2020 only, because we knew we would have to come up with some other methodology for 21 going forward. Okay. So do I need to amend my amendment to be in year 2021? I haven't accepted your amendment yet, and we haven't voted on it, so I'm helping you craft okay. your amendment with <laughs> what you're trying to do. Okay. And so... Um, I move that we amend the number. We would need, okay, I move that we add a paragraph about 2021 to include that the state average teacher salary be calculated on the basic con teacher contract and not on productivity models. Or and not include productivity payments. Okay. Do you have a question or comment whether that's going to work or not? Uh, my my suggestion would be to hold hold off on doing anything until we meet. We're going to meet with some work groups um, from LEAs to come up with how we get to that information and what they report to us. And if that's a suggestion to bring to that work group, that would be welcomed. Okay. And then we can come back with how we're going to calculate that for 21 going forward. Do I need to move to refer, or do I just pull the amendment? Or I haven't accepted. I haven't accepted and put an amendment on the floor. So, then can I change the motion? Hang on. Hang on one sec. Okay, but. She's in a, she's kind of in a, she started, her, she never got her amendment accepted. So she's at a point that we're trying to get it. So she doesn't, she has, she's not going to amend any amendment. Yeah. But no, but you can restate your amendment after you've, I haven't accepted your amendment. So right. what are you wanting to so say? I'm, so I'm going to restate. Okay, now this will be. <laughs> I don't know if I need to even make a motion to do this, but to give this suggestion to the working groups, do I need to make a motion to do that? No, it's point. It's okay. No. Is it yeah. done? Then I'd like to make that I suggestion. Talk, I will talk to you afterwards okay. to make sure. I so you can withdraw. Yeah. Excellent. So that's Thank you. noted, okay. and you can withdraw your. I mean, I, I just won't accept your amendment because Excellent. you withdrew it. Thank you, Chair. Okay. So now we're, I think we're. So we're coming back. Superintendent, Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question in regards to the line 113 about um, the uh, non-support of preschool programs, meaning that the funds cannot be used, if I'm reading this um, Correct. correctly. I, I have spoken with some LEAs who are, <clears throat> excuse me, very interested in using some of these funds for preschool, uh, and there's some pretty good data showing that preschool programs can make a difference academically um, it's pretty strong data and that's what they're relying on so just I if I don't know who um, was this a singular I, I would just guess like some public explanation about it so that the public might understand is it according to what is in the law or is it a personal preference or if you could just expand on that so everybody is aware 
Okay, Angie? Yeah, I'd be happy to. The question came up from people out in the field wondering whether preschool programs qualified or not. And m our interpretation without this clarification was because it's a K-12 program that preschool programs did not currently qualify. So um, either we should codify essentially what our current understanding is, which is what this is, or we should add a line that says an LEA may use program money for preschool because school and trust program money, your school improvement plans currently that this is replacing all govern only K-12 programs. They do not govern preschool programs at an LEA. So um, I would say you either go with this amendment or we insert a line that says an LEA may use program money for preschool. Okay. Raising hands. Is that Board Member Belknap? Yes. Thank you, Chair. Are you acknowledging me? Yes. Board Member thank Belknap. Um, yes. Thank you so much. Um, one of the reasons for this is because this TSS money, TSSA money, goes to the principal who decides what is done with this money inside their school. And even though the school may run preschool programs inside their school, they have no direction, guidance, or jurisdiction over the preschool program. The money is, is not funneled that way from principals into, into preschools. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me just update the board where we're at. We, we have an amendment uh, to the motion to go from draft four to draft five as shown. Is there any further discussion to the amendment uh, to the motion? Seeing none, let's vote. And, and the amendment is to substitute draft five for draft four in the original mo motion, right? Okay, we're gonna vote on it. All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Oh, those, oh, let me get the ayes. Um, board member Belknap? Aye. Board member Scott Hansen? Aye. Okay, any nays? Okay, the Motion for the amendment passes. So now the motion, or the motion, the motion, the e motion, the motion on the table is that the board approve R277 927 draft five on second and final reading. Discussion to the motion? Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, those, oh, those online. Board Member Belknap? Aye. Board Member Scott Hansen? Aye. Okay. Aye. Those opposed? Voting was unanimous. Vice Chair Nielsen there, you are up. I think we're on 10.4. 10.4. I think. <coughs> Let me turn this. Happening around. You can read the update on that. It's on there, but there's no action taking place okay. at this moment. 10.4, uh, request for the use of Utah State Board of Education discretionary funds. Uh, I won't go through there. You can read through that. <clears throat> uh, the committee voted unanimously uh, to approve the use of discretionary funding as outlined in the proposal. If you have time to re re uh, read through that proposal, I'll move forward. So the committee moves that the board approve the use of $540,200 of the board's discretionary funds as outlined in the proposal. Okay, the, the motion before the board is that the board approve the use of $540,200 of the board's discretionary funds as outlined in the proposal. Discussion to the motion. Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Board member Belknap? Aye. Board member Scott Hansen? Aye. Okay, thank you. 
Those opposed? Voting was unanimous. Okay, moving forward, 10.5, Safe Utah Authorization Funds from House Bill 373, Student Support Amendments. This is dealing with the Safe Utah app. So the committee voted unanimously to authorize the use of 1.5 million one-time funding for contracting with the Safe Utah Crisis Line described in Section 53B-17-1202 as outlined in the proposal. So the committee moves that the board authorize 1.5 million one-time funding for contracting with the Safe Utah Crisis Line. Okay. Uh, the motion before the board is that the board authorize 1.5 million one-time funding for contracting with the Safe UT Crisis Line. Discussion to the motion. <laughs> Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Board Member Belknap. Aye. Board Member Scott Hansen. Okay. Thank you. Those opposed? Voting was unanimous. Okay, 10.6. I believe this one was removed and then it came back. So here we are. It's um, uh, referred to consent R277600, Student Transportation Standards and Procedures. And, uh, so the committee voted unanimously to approve R277-600 draft one on first reading. So the committee moves that the board approve R277-600 draft one on second and final reading. Okay, the motion before the board is that the board approve R277-600 draft one on second and final reading. Discussion to the motion, board member Lear. I'd like to make a substitute motion Okay. Um, that the that this committee this would be that amendment this, that this rule R two seven seven dash six hundred either be returned to committee for to make some changes or those changes can be made and the the rule can be put back on the consent calendar next month at the board chair's discretion. If I just was making the motion, then he'll ask me to speak to the. Okay, we. <laughs> You're basically doing a motion refer. to refer. Yes. We have a motion to refer. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion to the motion to refer. Um, uh, you want to speak to that motion? Yes. May I speak to yes. that motion? Um, Board Member Scott Hansen and I had some questions about this rule. There were some um, uh, mistakes in the in the citations uh, that were purely accidental on the on the staff's part but there were also and a, and a few other um, non-substantive changes but there are also a number of things such as um, there is a let me get to the page number um, I've got about three versions of this um, there there's a, a discussion of an annual report there's a mention of a um, two other things that don't have definitions to them and it we thought it would be important to have those definitions so it would be clear to someone or an LEA reading this rule so there would be a clear understanding of the of the rule so it was our recommendation that it doesn't necessarily it's not so complicated that the committee needs to discuss it again but if that's the board chair's preference that's fine but that those kinds of changes need to be made and the board can consider next month. Okay, um, a quick question. Oh, oh, we have the motion to refer in a second, but I'd like to ask that. This is kind of time sensitive, is it not? No, and I for thought what it reason? Would you please address that? Um, that yes, yeah. be happy to, and thank you. And board member Lair did um, talk, speak with us about the amendments, and we just felt that it would probably better to give us an, a little bit more time instead of doing them on the fly um, this morning. And so we agree with her recommendation to refer it a month. We did, however, request that it potentially go on the consent calendar next month um, due to somewhat of an urgency. The money will be distributed in September. So there's not an urgency to get it passed today, but if we could get it on the consent calendar for next month, that could be a good compromise with a motion to refer if it's if it's as simple and there's some definitions in that 
I don't see, as a chair, I don't see any problems at all doing that. But if it if it's larger than that, then I think it's got to be in front of a committee. So we'll weigh that out most likely with the direction and the, the, the communication we have. Um, I'm in support of yeah. a motion to refer, so I, I think we can make this happen. Uh, any other discussion to a motion to refer? Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Board Member Belknap. Aye. Board Member Scott Hansen. Aye. Thank you. Um, any opposed? Voting is unanimous. Please continue. Excellent. Uh, 10.7, R277622, School-Based Mental Health Qualified Grant Program. Uh, the committee voted unanimously to approve R277662. However, there was a few things that we needed to look at on this that needed to change. Um, finance, the Finance Committee uh, reported out that R277622, that there was a new rule. They discovered a new rule yesterday that was missing and required a component for the distribution formula that was part of the legislation. And so they updated this in draft three. So the committee um, didn't exactly, we voted on draft two, not on draft three. There's just a slight so, change there. So what's, a, what's appropriate, Chair, Vice, you know, you're chairing right now, so kind of, um, is that we, you move on the, what came out of the committee and then you'll quickly oh. go to you to, to the next, to the, Draft to, whatever, draft to, oh, three to the, or whatever. To move to, uh, right. to amend it to draft Dual three. Amendment, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So the committee voted unanimously to approve R two seven seven six two two draft two, or excuse me, draft one as amended on first reading. Okay. The mo draft, two. draft two. Okay. So, what came out of committee and what is being moved to the board is that the board approve R two seven seven six two two draft two on second and final reading. Discussion to the motion, and I'll turn the time to you. Okay, so I would move that the board approve R two seven seven six two two draft three to a, to do an amendment. To yes, as an amendment okay. to draft three. Okay. We have a motion and a s to um, amend the motion to from draft two to draft three. We have a second. Do you want? And you kind of spoke to the motion. Did you want to speak anymore? No, to the I'm. Motion? Yeah, no. I, okay. Let's just vote. Um, what was in? Is somebody going to speak to what was? What the differences yeah, are can, from or, draft um, two Jeff to draft three? Well. He's the one I, I call I to spoke vote. to earlier. Jeff, are you? Perfect. Angie or? Jeff. Um, so it was pointed out to us uh, yesterday that there was a piece of the distribution formula that's required by the new legislation, House Bill 373, that we missed when we created the rule. And that piece requires that we put in the formula an incentive for LEAs when they have a contract or the intent to collaborate with the local mental health authority of the county in which they reside. And so we put, as you see on the screen in green, starting on line 76 down to 87. Um, we'll do the distribution as was already put in the rule, the base plus model, um, and any undistributed funds. So think if there's schools who couldn't match everything that they qualified for, um, there could be some leftover funds in that, in that way. We would then use that money for the incentive piece for all the LEAs that qualify for the incentive that was outlined in the legislation. And it would be distributed on a proportionate basis of their student headcount that they have in comparison to the pool of eligible LEAs total headcount, if that makes sense. So it doesn't really disrupt the regular distribution that you have all um, been working with, but any rollover money or leftover money will then be used as the incentive. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment to substitute draft three for, for with draft two? Seeing none, let's vote on it. And the proposed, um, well, the the uh, amendment that you're voting on is to substitute draft three, draft substitute draft two with draft three. 
So, Correct. Did I say that right? Thank you. Kind of. All right. Let's vote on it. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Oh, um, Laura? Yes. Um, board Member Scott Hansen? Aye. Aye. Um, those opposed? No. Okay, motion passes. We have two, two no's. Okay, now we're back to the... We're back to 10.8? No. Well, oh. we're back to the original motion. The amendment passes. So the motion before the board is the board approve R277-622 draft three on second and final reading. All in, all in favor say aye. Aye. Board member Belknap. Aye. Board member Scott Hansen. Aye. Okay. Those opposed? No. The two. Okay, motion passes. Okay, please continue. Okay, Chair, 10.8, Board Policy 2001 and Attachment 1, Board Member Salary. So, Board Policy 2001 is designed to capture all the compensation that Board Members are eligible to receive. Previously, the policy did not differentiate between salary per diem payments and reimbursement for travel-related expenses. So, the Committee voted unanimously to forward Board Policy 2001 with Attachment 1 for Board, for board Approval. So, motion for the Board is the Committee moves that the Board approve Board Policy 2001 and Attachment 1. Okay, the motion before the board is that the board approve policy 2001 and attachment one. Discussion to the motion. Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Board member Belknap. Aye. Board member Scott Hansen. Aye. Okay, those opposed? Voting was unanimous. 10.9. 10 10.9. 10 <clears throat> so, SFY 20, uh, Utah State Board of Education Budget Formulation Review uh, by USBE section. So, as you read over that, the committee voted unanimously to approve SFY 20, USBE Budget Formulation, and recommend to the board for approval. So, the committee moves that the board approve the SFY 20 budgets. Okay, the motion before the board is that the board approve the uh, S. SFY 20 budgets. Discussion to the motion. Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Board Member Belknap. Aye. Board Member Scott Hansen. Aye. Okay. Those opposed? Voting was unanimous. And I don't believe there's any more motions, Chair. I we could go over those, but there's no more motions for the board. That conclude your report? Correct. We have a qu question, or board member, before we go. Back. Board member Jenny Earl. I, I do apologize. I actually had an amendment on one, and I did Sorry. not. I'm, I apologize. I, I was on the prevailing side, so I'm asking if you would consider bringing back 10.7, which is the R277-622, the mental-based, school-based mental health qualified grant program. I'm assuming you're on the prevailing. Yes, Nobody I was. told me that you weren't. <laughs> um, Did I say what? We have, a, we have a, a motion to bring back um, R277-622. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, is there a second? Second. Um, any discussion? Did you want to make a discussion or see if it passes first? Do you want? <laughs> yes, I, yeah, I would like to, well. Well, it's, we're, we're voting to see if it will come back. Okay. You want to speak to why you want to have it come back? Yes, I just wanted to, I, in looking through the, the uh, through the board policy, I wanted to make sure there was something in there about communicating with parents. The one thing that, well, see, now I don't feel like I'm explaining myself. To, do I, should I just do that, or that's well, okay. you're lobbying to have it come <laughs> okay. back, so this is your okay. So opportunity because to speak. the the one part that's in there, 
um, refers to just having a parent meeting once a year. And yet, if we're having um, counseling services um, offered through our schools, mental health services, I think our parents need to be a key component, at least with communication with those counselors. I think we need to have a, a, a simple line in there um, with that, that part of their requirement is that they will communicate with parents on services that their, re their children are receiving through the school. Okay. Um, not seeing any other, I'm not seeing any discussion. So the, the motion is to bring back R277-622. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Board Member Belknap. Aye. Board Member Scott Hansen. Aye. Those, okay, those opposed? Okay, voting is unanimous. So we have a, we're bringing back R277-622 draft three is so what's So staff can help me if I don't get this in the right spot. Okay. Okay, so this is so what I would like. So you have a proposed like. amendment? Yes, this is my proposed amendment okay. on line 36 or just have it slid down so it would take on C and it would say something like this. Um, plan for communicating with and involvement of parents when services are received through a counselor. I don't know if receive is the right word or, okay, so you want me to read that again? Hold on one second. Okay. Hang on, we're catching up okay, here on the screen. For plan for communicating with and, oh, okay, plan for communicating and involvement um, of parents or with parents um, when services are received through a counselor. In other words, making a plan for when a, a student is receiving services that the parent is directly involved in that um, help. So okay. would it, it would be, may I ask a clarifying question? So you're not replacing line 36, it would no, just be it just, after. Yes, gotcha. it would be just slid okay. down, just inserted okay. in there. Let me just delete that so, so I don't get confused. Okay. Okay, plan for communicating with and involving parents, maybe? For those that are on, on the, the phone, okay, do we have it for us? What, how line 36 read before. So you want a mental health personnel? Is that? And then we'll. Oh, qualified And then how, what the qualified. amendment will be. So changing, qualified what changing personnel. counselor to qualified personnel? Is that the dialogue, is that the language that's used in the law? Okay. Or qualifying spell. personnel. <laughs> <laughs> True qualifying personnel. Okay. Is that good? Does that work? Okay. So it would be after line. I Do you have the old plan for communicating. Okay. What do we just do? Communicating and involving parents. We wouldn't need with in there, right? Person. Yeah. Okay. So plan for communication and involvement with parents. Thank you. Well, this is being put together. <laughs> Superintendent, Superintendent Dixon, do you have a comment? Well, it's more of a question, and this is probably for um, the drafters and the, their, also their knowledge of the code. Because the bill directs the board to create, a, create rules around the distribution of funds, and this is about the distribution of funds, which so when you get down into the plan, it's not asking for a comprehensive plan, but it's about um, acts. The keyword in 36 is improving access to counselors or to mental health personnel, and then how um, the qualified personnel will increase that access, and then uh, making sure about the funding piece. So my question is. I, I completely agree with the concept. I mean, I wholeheartedly think that parents should be involved. I'm just wondering, is there 
another rule that clarifies that, that it would be better inserted into rather than the distribution of funds, because it seems this is what that is around. So I, I think you want this part of your plan, though. I don't. This is in the plan. This is the plan, and so I think if you include that in the plan, that's where that we can ask. Well, that and that is so, my question, yeah. actually, Chair, is um, okay. around. Our, uh, I don't think we're dictating the plan as much as a plan to use the funds. So that's where I'm trying to get clarification. I can just we're asking them to write the plan, though. And this, this is, we're asking the requirements that are written here um, in subsection 53F-2, that, that has requirements in it. Yeah, that's just the parent question. element isn't in there, so. OK. Um, um, Vice Chair Brittany Cummins, did you have a question on to the policymakers on? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so my question is related to this because the amendment seems to imply that the LEA is providing services, but I, I'm, I thought so. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought that this was the LEA um, helping to link students to services, and that their parents are the school isn't independently providing social services to a student. So I, I'm worried about the implication that that amendment makes that the school is actually providing service. So that's, I do I miss the intent of the grant program? Okay. I just wanted to pr provide mm -hmm. some quick clarification on, on whether or not this is necessary for the rule. The statute, the bill, House Bill 373, does actually include that the qualified personnel have to collaborate with the student's parents on the services being provided, and that's on line 181 of the bill. So oh, the it bill. is of the bill. So it is already part of the legislation. So it's not necessarily required for the rule because it's already part of the law. Yes, I guess this is this is allowing an LEA to make this a, a part of that. So it's just, and it doesn't have to be an extensive piece, but you're asking an LEA to write up their plan, and I think that is a critical part of that plan. So maybe 